Hey folks, Don DeRosa here. Got another question uh, where we're gonna pick random questions on the internet that I grab from the internet and answer them here on the channel. Today's question is, what comes from Barshan Zimmerman? Now these questions aren't asked directly to me. They're just asked on forums and I just look at them and go, okay, here's a good question that other people may want or may need the answer to. And this question came in from, on a Facebook page, Sub2 Nation. So the question was, what is the difference between a lease option and subject to? That's a great question. So before I tell you the differences, let me tell you what each of them are if you're not familiar with them. Subject to, or excuse me, let's start with lease option. Lease option is comprised of two agreements, typically, a lease and an option to purchase, okay? The option to purchase gives you an equitable interest in the property, so that it gives you the option or the right to buy a property. It doesn't mean you are buying it. It just gives you the option or the right to purchase it for a predefined purchase price. Um, similar to a stock like a strike price. So you would go to someone and say, hey, I would like to option your property. And let's say they're asking 200. You could say, oh, I would like to option your property for 200. And I'll give you a little bit of option consideration or down payment. It's usually considered an option consideration. And in most cases, it's non-refundable. So that would allow you to have an equitable interest in that property uh, to buy that property at a future date, whatever you choose, for that agreed upon price. So that is what's considered at its basic form, an option agreement. There are different styles of options out there, but generally that's, that's the basics. Then you have a second document that goes with that, and that's called a lease. Well, obviously that's your traditional lease where you go and you, you, you don't have ownership of it. You lease the property, just like you would do any kind of rental. If uh, any of you have ever rented a property or rented anything for that matter, they're gonna require you to sign a lease agreement. That lease agreement spells out the terms of that lease. Now you're in that lease for whatever the predetermined time frame is that you set. Could be six months, could be a month, could be a year, could be much, much longer, could be a hundred year lease for all I know. Um, so whatever the lease spells out, it just says, here's the lease and you as the landlord are allowing me to use this property, lease this property from you for a specified time under the following terms and conditions. So when you combine the two, you've got a lease with an option to purchase. Well, now you have an option that says, hey, I might wanna buy this in the future. And then I have a lease that I can lease this now, depending on your lease that you use, that lease may give you the right to sublease that property out to somebody else. So you may lease it from your buyer or your, excuse me, your seller, um, and then turn around and lease it out to someone else. And let's say you're going to lease it from your seller for $1,000. And then you're gonna turn around and you're gonna lease it back out or sublet it back out for $1,200. Well, that your new lease leasee gives you 1200 bucks and then you take and you strip off $200, put it in your bank account, and then you pay your leaseor the $1,000. So you get that difference in between. Now, the interesting thing is you don't own this property. Even if you have an option on the property, you don't own it. All you have is an interest in future, in a future of it. You may at your option buy this, but then again, you're not obligated to buy it if you don't want to. So you have no ownership whatsoever. You have an equitable type interest in it, but not a legal title. So that is a lease with an option to purchase. The benefit of something like that is you don't have ownership. 
and they're fairly easy to get into. But the downside of a lease option is you don't own it. And if your original seller does something stupid, gets a judgment or a lien against the property, and then you have an, a, an option or a lease at your new buyer, you may not be able to provide good clean title because there may be an encumbrance on it. That's the downside of a lease, what we call them sand, sandwich lease options. Okay, so you're sandwiched in the middle. Now let's talk about subject two for a second. Subject two is where you're going to buy a property or someone's going to convey the title to you and you're gonna utilize that existing financing forever, for as long as you need to. It could be a month, it could be 10 years, it could be forever, whatever you agree upon. So in a subject to transaction, the owner transfers the deed to you, but the loan and the note or the security instrument and the note stay in their name. So you don't have to go down to the bank and qualify for a loan. You don't have to jump through the, the hoops of, of qualifying and putting it on your credit report. Now, you may be asking yourself, why would somebody do that? There's lots of reasons why, just this is not the video for that. But just understand, there are lots of reasons why somebody would do that. And it basically comes down to motivation. Is there a motivating factor, such as pre-foreclosure, or two payments, death, divorce, something like that. So that's one of the reasons, that's, those are some of the reasons why they would do that. But in a subject to, you physically get the warranty deed or the ownership of the property. That transfers to you. So you have the ability, you have ownership of that. It is your property. Even though the loan is not in your name, the property is in your name. Therefore, you have the ability to receive all the tax benefits, the income, the profit, the tax, I mean, everything. So you get all the benefits of that. The difference between that and a lease option is a lease options, you don't have any ownership of them. You can't take any tax write-offs, you can't do anything. The only thing you can do is take a little bit in the middle and you could do some if you, for example, if you do a sandwich lease option, you could, from your seller, you could lease it from them for let's say $1,000 and give them nothing. Let's say they were a little bit motivated and they just wanted out. They were a, a burned out landlord or whatever the reason. So you pay them a thousand dollars. So then you go and you do a sandwich lease option and you lease option it out. Well, someone might be able to give you $5,000 down as an option consideration, pay you the additional $200. So they pay you 1200, you pay your seller a thousand. So you make $200 a month and then you, when you option that to your new buyer, you, instead of optioning it for, let's say $100,000 with what you have it under here, you now option it out for 120 or 130. So when this person cashes you out, you also get the difference between the 130 that they're willing to pay and the 100 that you're paying your, your seller. So you get three paydays in that case. So that's the benefit of a sandwich lease option. But in my opinion, the negatives kind of far outweigh the, the benefits, but there are, you can do lots of things with sandwich lease options. You can do Airbnbs, for example, right? Where you lease option it with, with your, your uh, seller or your leaseor, and then you turn around and you Airbnb it out and you don't own it, but you get the benefit of an Airbnb um, increased rent. But in a subject two, you own that. So you can sell it, you can rent it, you can do whatever. So the main difference between the two comes down to ownership. Subject two, you own it. You have the responsibility also of making the payments. Okay, so you promise to pay somebody to make their payments, then you should do that. So that's the main difference between a lease option and a subject two is the main thing is ownership. You have no ownership with a subject to, or with, excuse me, with a sandwich lease option or a lease option, and you have uh, ownership with subject to. And when you have the ownership, you get to write off everything, and it's just like you own the prop. Well, not just like you own the property. 
you just don't have the loan in your name. It's not on your credit report. It's on the other person's credit report. So hopefully that kind of made the difference between the two. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Um, let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up. And if you like that, hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification next to it to let me know that you liked it and you'd like to see more. Till next time, this is Don DeRosa saying thank you very much. Happy investing.